You know, Israel makes its own decisions. That is the message from Benjamin Netanyahu to the Foreign Secretary Lord David Cameron after he urged restraint in the wake of strikes from Iran last weekend. Well, the UK scrambled RAF jets to help protect Israel from that attack. Well, Mia Javendafar is a lecturer in Middle East politics at Israel's Reichman University and joins us live now from Tel Aviv. Mia, good morning. Wouldn't Israel be wise to take this on the chin and accept um, the what happened over the weekend um, and the way in which UK forces, allied forces, stopped those missiles from actually hitting um, Israel, with the exception of, of a few, and take that as a win? Well, that's the dilemma, Nicola. That's a real dilemma that we're facing in the state of Israel. On the one hand, we faced the biggest aerial ons onslaught ever. Um, not even the Russians fire missiles and, you, and drones at such high quantities uh, that the Iranians did on the night of the 13th of April. And uh, the kill ratio of those uh, missiles and drones was spectacular thanks to a number of factors, uh, uh, our good defense system, and of course, our allies, the United States and Britain. So on the one hand, one of the dilemmas is, yes, let's just say this is a win. Let's walk away from it. Let's perhaps uh, sanction Iran, the Iranian regime and, uh, and not escalate. But Nicola, you know, we're living in the Middle East here. Uh, this is, uh, in this region, uh, if you take something like that on the chin and just walk away from it, despite the fact that uh, you managed to destroy so many of the incoming drones and missiles, then you risk encouraging further attacks. Why? Because the Iranian regime is establishing a red line here. They're saying that every time from now on you attack one of our, one of our people, one of our military officials, we're going to do that to you. And if Israel doesn't respond, then Israel will gonna, is going to have to live with that red line. And this is something that no Israeli leader would accept because of the Iranian regime's previous behavior towards Israel. Mia, good morning. Welcome to Talk Today. Thank you for coming on. I have so much I want to uh, say. You touched upon many things there. Um, what I thought was very interesting, and, and whether he wants to listen to Cameron or the United States, whether it's diplomacy, you know, there are people in this country, my friend, that would say we, we did what we did with our jets for you because you're an ally, perhaps you should listen to us. I'm, I'm not getting into that debate. I mentioned about the reaction. Talking about Nick was talking about tit for tat. Um, Iran's proxies, we know this, the Houthis and the Hamas and, uh, and Hezbollah have been waging terrible things in the Middle East. Now, the fact of the matter is, and I've talked about it for a long, long time, it, sanctions aren't going to work against Iran because they'll continue to do business with Russia and China. Uh, my question is, where do we go from here? Everybody uh, anywhere, I think, in the world saw what happened to your country on the 7th of October and understood the need to get rid of that terrorist organisation. You would also understand that globally people will look at what's happening in Gaza and go, this is appalling, what needs to be done? Where does it end? Does Iran... I mean, what, what Nick's saying is you go back, they go back, other people get involved. People are starving in Gaza. Uh, Israelis are terrified. There are hostages still held. We're six months into this, and, and, and I'm just interested, from your point of view, how you see this playing out, sir. This is uh, like, uh, you know, trying to solve a Rubik's Cube while trying to land an uh, aircraft on the Krypton Factor. Yeah. A program I remember I watched in the UK. Um, I'm Iranian originally. I'm from Iran, moved to the UK. I lived for 17 years in your beautiful country. And I'm um, Iranian-Israeli. Both, being both Iranian and Israeli, uh, Jeremy, I can tell you this is something, this is, a, this is a mathematical equation that you need a computer, super computer, uh, quantum computer to, to, to solve if you want to balance everything which means it's extremely difficult. We have to, these things are interconnected. Um, the, first of all, the Iranian regime is very unpopular with the people of Iran. The people of Iran want to have a better life. Just look at the high, large number of Iranians who are asylum seekers in the UK. They come from a very oil rich and a, and a, and a very beautiful country. But because of the regime's policies, uh, you know, antagonistic policies, it it's denies the Holocaust. It calls for the elimination of Israel. It arms anybody who wants to kill Israelis. It arms Hamas. So on the one hand, we have to confront that. This is not just about tit for tat. This is a war that's been declared on Israel. We ne Israel never wanted this war with the Iranian regime, but the Iranian regime declared war on Israel in 1991. This has been going on since 1991, Jeremy. 
So Israel has to confront it because for the first time, the Iranians are now actually attacking us directly. Before it was, they were subcontracting it, if you like. But now they're attacking us directly. So we cannot uh, leave that uh, without a re response. Now, of course, the response will have to be measured. We don't want an escalation. It's somewhere between you don't want an escalation and you don't want to leave this unanswered. On the question of Gaza, um, there are many things we have to do. Uh, you know, uh, this is a war that's terrible. Again, Israel did not want it. But one of the best ways to find a solution is for Hamas to accept a ceasefire. And for the flat, I think now the last two or three ceasefire um, offers by the state of Israel have been rejected. I'm not going to sit here and tell you we've made no mistakes in Gaza. We have. But the situation in Gaza needs to be remedied with Hamas making compromises. And every time we try to do that, Jeremy, we are hitting our heads against the brick wall because Hamas doesn't care about its people. It's Sinwar, the leader said, He's even willing to see 100,000 people dead to get what he wants. So this is, as I go back to, to my original uh, example, this is an exact, this is extremely difficult and, and we are in a very, very tough situation. Well, thank you so yeah, much uh, for joining you, us this morning. Brilliant. Here, Javed um, Yes, thank how, you so much. How interesting an Iranian who's now uh, in Israel. That's yeah. really interesting. Thank you, Mia. Yes, indeed. Good.